Welcome back to my Strapi course. So far in the course, we've used the RESTful API to retrieve items from the content tabs we've created. We've applied filters to them and populated media, fields, components, and dynamic zones. But we have not created, updated, or deleted items through the RESTful API in Strapi. In this video, I'll address that topic and we'll create, update, and delete items with the RESTful API. To start, I have a, an almost empty Strapi instance, the only difference being that I have a few content types created. I'll focus on this content type, products, which has a couple of fields, title, a school, description, and price. These are just text fields and a number field. So let's create our first entry right now. To do so, I have to make a post request. I will use Postman for that. We have to make an HTTP post request to the actual API. We've accessed the API so far with get requests under API products, and I can do so here as well. I get a forbidden error because an unauthorized uh, request is currently not allowed to read anything about products. With that in mind, we have to authorize our API right here. And to do so, we first have to go to settings and we can generate an API token here. I already have created one test token. Let's remove that and create a new API token. You can call your token whatever you want. This is just an identifier for you so that you can identify what this token is used for and by who. You have duration, which can be 7, 30, 90 days or unlimited. Of course, unlimited is not frequently recommended, but sometimes necessary for fundamental functionality of your application. And token type can be read only for access or custom. If I click custom, I'll be able in permissions to configure granular permissions for each content type. Everything is unselected by default. It's recommended to make uh, tokens with very specific permissions. In this case, I'll make this token. Uh, I'll give this token access to all permissions for the product collection type. And I'll save that. And here we get the token. Make note of this, that you will not see this token again. So you have to copy it now. Uh, you will only be able to delete the item after you click back or refresh this page. In my Postman tool, I can use this in the authorization, which is basically an HTTP parameter. And I'll use a bearer token and paste my token right here. In a normal HTTP request, this is just passed as the authorization header. Very, very simple. So I'll go back now that I have my token and I've set it in order to authorize with it. I will go to my content manager products and uh, I can make a post request actually. Let's copy the endpoint. This is my API endpoint. I just change localhost. And we'll make a post request to API products. This will create a product. In order to pass the information for the fields, I have to set the body to JSON. In this import I'll choose row uh, JSON, which will just set the content type header to application slash JSON in the HTTP request. And as you can see in the content type builder, my products type has a title, school, description, and price. To start, none of these fields are required. So to start, I'll just create a product with a title. To do so, you need to set the data property, which is an object. Sorry, this is JSON, not JavaScript. And inside you can specify your fields. In my case, the field is title, and I want this to have a test title. Now, if I send this request, I can see the response. The response is uh, usually the created item. So let's take a look at, oh, sorry, I'm making a get request. That's why I'm not getting the created item. We have to make a post request to create the item. Let's send it again. And here we go. We, in data, we have the created item. It has the title I specified, created at updated at published at, which are automatically uh, inserted with a timestamp and the other fields are no. If I go back to my content manager in Strapi and go to products, I can see my newly created product here. 
and it has the test title I specified with the API. All right, in order to modify an item, we have to actually make a request to Swash API, the content type, SWAC, and then the ID of the, of the actual item. In this case, this product has an ID 6. So I'll specify that and let's modify the title first. I'll set it to update it and change the request to a put request, which is frequently used for updating. If I send the request now, I get the modified item as the response and my title is updated. If I refresh the Strapi content manager, I can see the change right here. Let's now add the other fields, uh, the school description and price just to check out how it works. All right, I specified the fields and if I send the request again, I get the response back that these fields were updated successfully. And if I refresh my content manager and open the item, all of my data is right here. So this is how we update an item and that we actually already created with the RESTful API. Okay, let's delete the item now. Very basic, we don't need any of that body, just the authorization token and make a delete request to the APIs, the SWOC of the content item and the ID of the item. If I send the request right now, I get back the deleted item and if I refresh the Strapi content manager, the item is no longer here. Very straightforward and the authorization works with an API token, which is great. With this, I'll wrap today's video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video in the series is released. Take care.